Hey everyone, welcome back. And if you're new and into homebrewing, make sure to subscribe to get updates from this channel. Your support and feedback will help me bring you more content like this video. In this video, I'm going to compare my do-it-yourself glycol system to my new fermentation chambers. I'm going to share my thoughts on build complexity, ease of use, cost, power usage, and most importantly, how well each system maintained fermentation temperatures. So let's get started. First, let's compare the build complexity. You've probably seen my do-it-yourself glycol system in previous videos. And if not, make sure to check this video out. This do-it-yourself system has really performed well over the past three years. It uses a converted 5,500 watt window air conditioner to cool the glycol and a do-it-yourself temperature controller that dials in temperatures by using pumps, sensors, and heat exchangers. And now for the new additions to my home brewery, the fermentation chambers. I added two of these fermentation chambers to my brewery because I wanted to try something a little different to maintain temperatures. Compared to the glycol system, this is a much simpler setup. All I had to do for this build was plug in the temperature controller into the freezer and the chamber was ready to ferment. This was the easiest do-it-yourself build in my brewery so far. Once each system was set up, both systems were relatively straightforward to use. Here are three differences that stood out to me. One, the glycol system has more components to work with. It's not a huge deal, but there are more hoses, adapters, and wires. All that's needed with the fermentation chamber is to open up the freezer lid and place the fermenter into the chamber. Two, the glycol system has heat exchangers that need to be cleaned, whereas the fermentation chamber does not use heat exchangers, making cleanup a breeze. And three, the fermentation chambers are much quieter than the glycol system. I could barely tell the chest freezer was running. Next, let's talk about cost. Both of these systems cost about the same for a two fermenter setup. My glycol system costs around $350 compared to the two fermentation chambers that were around $380. I could have cut cost in my do-it-yourself glycol system by not opting to buy quick hose disconnects for convenience and simplifying my control panel design. The fermentation build was completely dependent on the cost of the freezer and the controllers. I felt I found the best deal at the time of this purchase. Next, power usage. I was really curious about how much power each system used during fermentation. I thought the glycol system was going to win hands down. I purchased two power meters to monitor the power levels during fermentation. And over a 10 day period, I measured once during the morning and once during the evening. Here were the results. The fermentation chamber started around 0.101 kilowatt for the first day and steadily rose about a tenth of a kilowatt per day. Prior to cold crashing, the data shows I used about 1.122 kilowatts to keep my fermenter at target temperatures of 68 degrees. The temperature in the garage during this time ranged around 60 to 70 degrees. After cold crashing for a day to 34 degrees, the total power used by the fermentation chamber came to 1.613 kilowatts. Over the same time period, the glycol system used nearly four times as much power to maintain temperature and cold crash to temperature. Here's what the data looks like. The glycol system started at 0.333 kilowatts and steadily rose about three tenths of a kilowatt per day over a 10 day period. By day 10, the glycol system used 5.166 kilowatts. After cold crashing, this system used a total of 7.257 kilowatts of power. Let's talk about how well each system maintained temperature. I'm happy to report, although there are some difference in power usage, each system did a really good job at maintaining target temperatures. The temperature controller on each system was set to allow plus or minus three degrees difference in temperature before the system kicked on to maintain temperatures. This data chart shows that both systems maintained my target temperatures. You can see that the glycol system numbers kept a little tighter window of temperature compared to the fermentation chamber, but not by much. My big takeaway, I'm really impressed with my new fermentation chambers. My glycol system has been great and it's my most popular video on this channel to date. 
and the data tells me it does a great job maintaining temperatures. I plan on using the fermentation chambers for my next few brew days to really run the system through its paces. My glycol system is not going anywhere and it will still get plenty of use. However, I do like the fermentation chamber system's simpler design, ease of use, and its ability to maintain temperatures almost as good as my glycol system. I think the fermentation chamber is a great, simple system for people looking to maintain temperatures in five gallon bucket type fermenters. This fits my current needs perfectly. I think the glycol system is a great option for fermenters that don't easily fit inside a chest freezer like a conical fermenter. This type of system would also be great if you're looking for a slightly smaller footprint or want to set up a design that supports more than two fermenters. Well, that's it for this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if this information was helpful and drop a comment if you have feedback or questions. See you next time. Cheers.